What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Electric Productions. I'm Jay, and we're going to be looking at a new early access title that just came out on Steam today. It's Black Day. Roll intro. <laughs> So what is Black Day? Black Day is a sandbox style game. It was created with Unreal Engine 4. This game is based around the idea of you creating scenarios to play, gaining XP, and after gaining said XP, unlocking new options to vary the scenarios even further. In concept, that sounds like a lot of fun. It gives you lots of different options. It gives you lots of different variety for, for different playthroughs. It's not a bad idea in concept. Let's jump into the options and see what we got there. One thing of note, there's a lot of different keys in this game. And they've got the key menu where it repeats itself over and over and over again. And what I mean is camera, movement, combat, inventory, HUD, drone. Camera, movement, combat, inventory, HUD, drone. Camera, movement, combat, inventory, HUD, drone. So, it's early access, no big deal, I can live with that camera not much to see there video there's actually a fair amount of options here for tweaking things in your resolutions effects motion blur bloom turn your bloom and motion blur all the way down if the game is borderline unplayable it's it's really bad with bloom and uh, motion blur turned up if you want to change your resolution just know that you have to click this arrow here you can't actually click on here it looks like it's working but nothing happens and then you have to right click on whatever resolution you want to actually change the resolution. So let's go to the sandbox mode. There's different levels that you can unlock using XP. You can choose night or day. You can choose your enemy faction and each enemy faction has different weapons and, and loadouts and it actually changes how much XP you earn. You can choose the number of tasks. We're just going to do one. You can change your weapons and when you go to change your weapons they have different attachments that you can bring with you and that actually changes your your weight if you choose to have the weighted gear turned on or off. So there's three weapons, all of them right now. I only have the starting weapons. Gives you a little bit of a some details on the weapons themselves, damage range, reload speed, things like that so you can compare and contrast. A lot of different materials you can choose to bring. These do affect your weight as well. So if you want to have this turned on, weight gear, I can't climb, high jump, sprint, run, or jog right now because weight gear is turned on because I've got so much stuff that I'm bringing with me. There's a drone you can deploy. There's lots of options here. First person only, but you can't use cover then. You can choose where you can spot enemies or turn that option off. Realistic sniper, you have to be crouching and hold your breath. Realistic hits make you reel for a couple of seconds, not able to do anything once you take a bullet. No fake zoom, no crosshairs, realistic mags, things like that. Enemy sensor is how well they can spot you. And then enemy skill is how good they are once they spot you at killing you. Enemy spawn is how many enemies. You can have special enemies available to fight against that will randomly generate and that will increase your XP. And then your player health. Let's jump in. All right, so upon loading up, I recommend you hit spacebar right away because the game wants to let itself kind of load in slowly, but it takes too long and it's faster just to load in right away. So we've got one objective here that we've got to, to accomplish. The game looks okay. It doesn't look great. It looks pretty blurry and I've got everything on ultra right now. Another thing of note here. Your character will climb over pretty much everything in the game, which is a cool feature. However, with that being said, there are invisible walls everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. And you say, well, that's not fair. You climbed that fence. That was your decision. He clearly was trying to say, well, don't go that way. It's fair. Let's take the path, then. There's the invisible wall. Right there. Can't go any further. So, the last few games I've played have all had invisible walls. If you're going to do that, just put rocks. You've got rocks there. You've got rocks there. Just put rocks. Don't, don't try to give the illusion of making it more open, because nothing kills immersion faster than having a pathway that's almost a football field in width that you can't go down. So, maybe that's just a pet peeve of mine. You can lay down and go prone. This is my drone, 
and the forward key on the drone does not work. I don't know why. The drones control so poorly that I've not messed with them. And you can spawn a ton of them all on top of each other. And they'll stay there. And they're indestructible. So those are the drones. Uh, you could crouch, and if you're sprinting, your character will slide. You can hit Y to go into first person mode. E is your melee attack. Reload is what you'd expect. You've got your inventory, so you can kind of tweak what's on your weapons and what's not. You can try to use your med kits. It's working this time. The last time I played, it actually didn't work. You'll get stuck in the menu system, because if you hit escape, it takes you to this screen where you can see all your keybinds. And then inventory will bring this up, and then you'll hit escape to try to get out of your inventory, and it takes you to this screen. It gets a little confusing. Got to make sure you hit the right key for the right things in this game. You could change whether your weapon does burst. Oh, you can also switch which shoulder you look over, which is nice if you're in third person. So it's auto, single, and three round burst. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to full auto here. And I'm gonna go into first person. Oh, one of the, the issues that this game has is so right now, let's switch shoulders. So there's third person, no big deal, but let's switch to our sniper rifle. So when you aim in on the sniper rifle in third person, it does this wonky, it pulls up the crosshairs first, and then zooms down the scope. And you say, well, that's just so that you can get off a shot quicker and not have to wait to zoom in. No, it's not. It's very, very broken. So if I go ahead and do this a couple of times, I can no longer use my scope properly. I'm holding in the right mouse button, and it is zooming in for half a second, and then zooming out, and I'm still holding the right mouse button right now. You have to sit there and do some other things, and it will reset the scope. Okay. So let's go into first person mode. Let's switch back to my main weapon here. And let's make our way towards our mission. Movement feels very, very clunky. I think they were going for a sense of realism, and they didn't want the character to control like it's an arcade shooter. And I respect that. When you zoom in down the scope, it looks terrible. I mean, just really bad. There we go. I understand you were wounded. Where were you hit? In the butt talk, sir. The movement when you zoom in also is very... jittery, for lack of a better term. It's not smooth at all. When you're zoomed in and trying to look, it's just... It, it feels like the reticle is just jumping around with each little micro-movement. And it doesn't feel good. Wow, this is going to be a quick mission. So let's go ahead. So I tried to stop as I got close to the table. And your character's got kind of forward momentum. And he'll just sort of go where he wants to go till he's done moving. So let's hack it. Hacker man. He's the most powerful hacker of all time. That's it. It's hacked. Now we can go to the extraction point. So you can hide bodies if you want, and that's what happens. There is fall damage in this game, quite a bit of it. Your character does like to climb any surface that you get near. So let's let's switch back to third person here, and I'll see if I can show you what I'm talking about. So I can't get up that, but he'll probably try to climb this. Yep. So, I like that. That's kind of neat. But it does get you into trouble because it's very easy for you to climb places that you're not supposed to be. Do you see the sparks coming off the water when I shoot it? Yeah. It shouldn't happen. So, we're crouched right now. Let's keep going to the extraction point. And it's kind of weird sometimes. You'll launch yourself off of certain surfaces, fall a fairly long way, and not receive any damage. Other times you'll do a drop off of something like this, and it seems like I take damage. So, I don't know. It's not very congruent with each situation. There we go. Let's climb that. And make our way towards the chopper, or whatever it is. They don't actually show you anything. You just get there, and it's just mission over. Stuff like this happens 
all the time. So I'm probably stuck, and this is probably game over for me right now. Yep. So I'll try something here. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, let's try going. Oh no! Nope. I deployed a drone rather than going prone. Oh drone, I really just want you to. <laughs> okay. So, my character's really freaking out now. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Did I get out? Where did it put me? Wait a minute, I'm... What just happened? Okay, I was it. That's... Okay, whatever. So, let's keep moving. Carefully. Avoiding the terrain. Let's pull up the map. So there's me. So I'm going the wrong way here. But I wonder if I could actually go down to the south and come up into that camp on the other side. The problem is going to be navigating this terrain to get down there without dying. But... So I'll try to run through here and actually complete the mission really fast. But as I do, I'm actually going to start to wrap this up. So here we go, guys. We've been having quite a few discussions lately, at least on this channel, about kind of staying within your realm and your scope when it comes to making games. This individual had an idea, which is a good thing. He wanted to make a game that was sort of a sandbox, arcade slash realistic shooter. And I say that because it's still one man up against, you know, a small army. But rather than it being Unreal Tournament, he wanted more of sort of SOCOM, uh, Arma. Now, there's only one positive review so far for this game, and it's clearly by somebody who is involved because it says, Great game, like a mixture of Arma and something else. And no, this is, this is, if you want to play Arma, go play Arma, because this... Surprise. You know what? Let's hide this body. <laughs> he just shot his own teammate. Gotcha. Ow. You shot me, you a Okay. So he had a dream, he had a vision, he had a goal, and then he went about trying to make it. The problem is, is that, I'm guessing it's one person, he didn't have, and I'm not trying to be mean here, but it's pretty evident, he didn't have the skills to be able to do that. He purchased a bunch of assets, high-end assets, off of the Unreal Store, I'm hazarding a guess, and then after he did that, he started to try to put it together in a way that it mirrored his vision for the game that he wanted. There's nothing wrong with spending money at the asset store to buy quality assets. There's nothing wrong there at all. You know, if you're if you're not strong in the area of of creating assets, then by all means, I mean, that's just that's just smart. What am I hitting? Okay, that wheat is like really tough. Got him, finally. Going to the map here. So, our target's actually moving towards our position right now, which is a good thing. The music changed so abruptly. I took out the last guy and it's like... Back to... Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful is what I feel when we're together. Got him. So now we extract. 
So where does that leave us for this game? This is a lofty attempt by somebody to make a game that they had a vision of. They went onto the asset store, on the, the Unreal Asset Store, purchased some assets, and tried to put it together to make a game that they had visualized and dreamed of making. Having ambitions is a good thing. Being realistic is an even more important thing than that. This person needed a team of individuals that could, that could help him make his dream and his vision come true. There are things in this game that desperately need some solid coding behind it to make this game actually fleshed out into a full-fledged game. Now, it is on early access, and here's the thing why I'm not just trying... I'm not trying to tear this game to pieces. I'm about to end this man's whole career. It does that for itself. Oh. Oh! <laughs> what I am trying to do is say... Monster kill. kill is say that this game desperately needs more attention and help. I'm going to refund this game at this point because my fear is this. This gentleman's going to reach the end of his capabilities and not have the backing to get the help and support that he really needs from some people that are skilled enough to be able to bring this game to production level quality. Okay, so where does that leave us? This game is an ambitious title that somebody dreamed up and thought sounded really good on paper. They went to the asset store and grabbed some high quality assets, probably paid a lot of money for them, and then at that time started to try to put them together. They did the very best that they could, and this is what we've got. A game that is, no offense, a buggy broken mess. Now, could this game be brought to a level where it is worth the 20 to 25 dollars yes i think it could it's going to require way more time effort energy and money though than i think this person's willing to put into it could i be wrong yes and i hope that i am i want to be proven wrong here i like the concept of this game i like the idea of it i like the idea of having a kind of a, a sandboxy arena style levels that you choose what goes on in there and what your difficulty level is and you could put it through the roof and have to crawl slowly through and, and take out enemies so that you get a big XP bonus at the end of the mission. I like the idea that you could tweak it and maybe upload a copy online of the mission that you set up for your friends to try to play and complete. There's lots of different options that this game has and a lot of different opportunities for it in its future to be a better and better game. But right now, it's very, very broken and has no business being on the Steam store, really in this state, for sale. If he wanted to release this for free right now, then I get it, I understand. People could play it and give feedback. If he wanted to have it on his own website where he said, hey, please come play my game and give me feedback. Sounds good. Charging $20, my fear, what's happening here is this. He purchased some very expensive assets off the Unreal Store. He's taking those very expensive assets, putting them into a game, thinking it's going to come together and meld well. It didn't, and now he's out a lot of money from all of those expensive assets that he purchased. So what does he do? He puts the game out there, he makes it look really good on the Steam Store, he's hoping a bunch of people buy it for $20, and that he could recoup the costs that he put into making it. In a perfect world, maybe he thinks that a bunch of people are going to buy it, he can take that money, actually hire some people that know coding and different things like that at the level that he needs to clean this thing up and make it maybe kind of like a, a hidden gem. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you liked it, by all means let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see me do more of this game or more games like this. I try to find games like this to warn people about just because I'm a sucker for games on Steam that look cool and this game actually looks kind of neat from the, from the Steam store page. So thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. And as always, have a great day.